This turned out to be a nice weekend. Yeah, go figure. Who would have thought Rose knew what she was talking about? Certainly not Rose. <laughs> well, she was right. So we had a lot of baggage to clear up. Yeah, and I'm glad we talked it out. Me too. You know, when all's said and done, all we have in this world is each other. You, me, and that methane cloud you call a sun. <laughs> Mom. Odds. That's okay. I got this one. Thank you. Hey, Mom. Oh, that's Judith. No, I'm just sitting here enjoying the sunset with my favorite brother, Alan. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, I am. Jake, your mom's here. Hey, Judith, how's it going? Well, I just had a flat tire on the freeway and called AAA, only to find out that I no longer have AAA because you no longer pay my dues. Excuse me, but we're divorced. You're, you're supposed to pay that out of your alimony. No, I'm not. And because you didn't, I had to stand on the side of the road until some creepy little man stopped and offered to change my tire if I would show him my breasts. Well, there you go. I paid for your breasts. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll let our attorneys figure out who pays oh, for roadside service. No, no, no attorneys. No attorneys. I'm, 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 I'm happy to pay for it. Thank you. Was that so hard? No, no, not, not, not hard at all. Bye, Dad. Bye, buddy. In fact, it was easy. All I had to do was bend over and unclench. <laughs> okay, I said it. Mom, you just said I said it. <laughs> Wow, that was a really great dinner. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You ready for dessert? I've been ready since I was 14. <laughs> I'll be right back. Why don't you put some music on? Okay. <laughs> I believe in that. Hey, uh, uh, how about, uh, Diana Krall? Oh, actually, that's your brother's CD. Do you mind bringing it back to him? Not at all. And I think I have one of his T-shirts. You might as well take that, too. No problem. <laughs> hey, it's a cool little CD player. Oh, thanks. It was a gift from your... It, it was a gift. <laughs> Is there anything else Charlie left behind? Just me. <laughs> My brother's a fool. No argument here. Mm. That is a very effective negligee. Thank you. Was it a gift? No. As a matter of fact, I bought it myself. Oh, good. Mm. How long ago? What? Oh, I was just wondering if Charlie saw it. Alan, don't go there. Oh, I, I wasn't going anywhere. It's just that... Nothing more kissing. <laughs> uh, okay. What exactly is bothering you? Well, it, it's kind of hard to explain. For example, uh, once when Charlie and I were at camp, I lost my swim trunks, and I had to wear an old pair of Charlies, and I just couldn't enjoy the pool at all. So, what are you saying? I'm a pair of used swim trunks? No, no. Uh, in this case, I, I think you'd be the pool. Maybe this was a bad idea. No, no, no. It's, it's a great idea. It's, it's right up there with the wheel and, and fire and refrigerators that give you ice through the door. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. What? Why? Why? Because clearly you can't be with me without it being some sort of competition with your brother. Uh, it's not a competition. And, and, and even if it was, shouldn't we do it first before you decide who wins? <laughs> you are unbelievable. Okay, now that could be taken a couple of different ways. Get out. Well, no ambiguity there. <laughs> 
Don't forget your brother's CD. Ah, my eye! <laughs> This is a cute top. I'm more a bottom man myself. I bet you are. <laughs> Too slutty? Haven't you heard? Slutty is the new black. Oh, you. Is there some special young vagina enthusiast you'll be taking that off for? I wish. Can you keep a little secret? I'm keeping a big one right now. I haven't been with a man in almost a year. Oh, no. Color me sympathetic. I don't miss dating. That's just lies and pretense, but I do miss the sex. Really? Well, what specifically do you miss? And tell me slowly. The feel of a man's hot breath on the back of my neck. His rough hands pulling me to him and just taking me. Of course, I don't need to tell you. No, but I'm so glad you did. <laughs> Isn't it funny that I can only be this honest with a gay man? That's yeah, a riot. I guess it's because straight men only want one thing and they'll tell any number of lies to get it. The dogs. And straight women are so competitive, they'll use anything that you say against you. The bitches. And gay women only want one thing and they'll lie worse than straight men to get it. Which is kind of strange, because they've already got it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's the other thing about gay men. You're so hilarious. Yeah, we're well, like clowns who smell nice. Oh, you know, these are pretty. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's pretty sheer. Eric used to hate it when he could see my nipples. Is that a gay thing? Well, I can't speak for the whole community, but I myself am nutty for nipples. Let's try it on. Okie dokie, artichokey. So, I see you're having some back pain. That'll be a hundred dollars, please. <laughs> yeah, it started in my back, but now it's kind of radiating out into a body-wide unbearable agony. You have a really cute little nose, you know that? Did the pain start in your lower back? Best I can tell, it's a spasm between L4 and L5. Oh, are you a doctor? Yes, I'm a chiropractor. So, no. <laughs> How did this happen? Well, I, uh... Slipped. On an actress. I can handle this, Alan. Okay, see, the thing is, I was in the middle of... An actress. <laughs> I'm warning you. Do the details really matter? No, no, I think I got the picture. There's video if you need it. Keep it up. Okay, I see here your last visit was four years ago. A mild hernia brought about by... Okay, I think I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> He's a sexual compulsive with narcissistic tendencies. Oh, so you're a pretend psychiatrist, too. <laughs> so what's the course of treatment here? A, a pill, a shot, maybe one of those epidurals? We'll see. First, I'm going to get your blood pressure and take some x-rays. I take blood pressure and x-rays. Your mother must be very proud. <laughs> Actually, no. Someone will be right in to take you to x-ray. Wait, I'm still in pain. Try and hang in there. In the meantime, maybe your little buddy can give you a massage. <sighs> can you believe her? Yeah, she is something else. Oh, Charlie, please don't tell me you're interested in that condescending, arrogant excuse for a woman. Pardon me, Alan, but that is a condescending, arrogant, hot excuse for a woman. <laughs> She's just your typical obnoxious MD. I'm a doctor. I have special license plates. I can park wherever I want. <laughs> I don't know where I want to park. You're unbelievable. Does your penis have an off switch? A pause button? No, just a little freckle. And you're always telling me I should date a better class of woman. What's classier than a doctor? Oh, please. Four years of med school, two years of internship, a year of residency, and everybody thinks they're so special. But I'll tell you something. A new day is dawning, a day of reckoning, and it is spelled H-M-O. No more country clubs, no more Cadillacs. Just sky-high insurance premiums and low, slow copay reimbursements, just like the rest of us. I bet she knows a lot of secret anatomy stuff. You know, places you touch and the top of your head flies off. 
course, if you have sex with a doctor, there's always a chance they'll have to split in the middle of the night for an emergency call. Well, Charlie, I guess that's just a price you'll have to pay. No, no, that works for me. <laughs> you just get up in the morning and figure out ways to make me crazy. Is that what you do? You, you plot it out? How, how can I make Alan miserable today? How can I reach into his chest, rip out his heart, and suck it dry? Mom or ex-wife? Ex-wife. Hi, Judith. Charlie says hello. She says hi. You're evil and selfish, you know that? No, no, I, I think that is a helpful comment. I pay you alimony and child support so that you can have a nice house, a nice car, every weekend free because I've got Jake. And yet, you're telling me you need a vacation? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? And what exactly is stressing you out, Judith? Is it the weekly manicure, the housekeeper? Boob lift. The boob lift. That you paid for. That I paid for. And never got to see. And never got to see. No, no, you listen to me. I think you live a damn fine lifestyle that I work 60 hours a week to support. So if anybody needs a vacation, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, Judith's going to Hawaii for a week. <laughs> so Jake's staying here. I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, damn it. What? The sink stopped up again. That kid still doesn't know the difference between the garbage disposal and the drain. What do you want? He's 11. That's no excuse. If he can't tell which hole is which at his age, he's headed for big trouble down the road. had the worst nightmares. Pirate ships? Full service gas stations. I failed to see the connection. Cold steel nozzles going into openings. <laughs> Dipsticks being pulled out. Do I have to draw you a picture? You know what? You need to get your mind off this colonoscopy. Come on! Easy for you to say. How about this? How about you and me hop in the car and go to Vegas for a couple of days? Just like that? What about Jake? Oh, yeah, Jake. Okay, how about this? We get him a fake mustache and a hat and tell everybody his mother was a heavy smoker. I don't think so. Oh, we can still bring him, but come on, it's the perfect solution. The kid's bored out of his mind and you're all puckered up over this colonoscopy thing. It just won't! Well, it is a three-day weekend. Exactly, and I got two grand in my pocket that's itching to turn into 12 bucks in a hangover. Come on, we can be there in like four hours. Unless you drive, in which case I'm not going. Oh, perfect. Now I can't get it out. You know what? Why not? One way or another, I'm going to get reamed. I might as well enjoy a free seafood buffet. Great. Go grab a toothbrush for you and the kid, and we'll hit the road. Pinky, Berta, order a keg and call the gang. I got the house till Tuesday. Sometimes when the nest is threatened, these seemingly docile creatures have been known to eat their own young. Hey, did Mom call you at the office today? No. Did she call here? No. It's been pretty quiet. Yeah. Maybe too quiet. And here we see the female praying mantis after copulation devouring her mate. Your ex-wife back from her parents? Yeah, I dropped Jake off with her this afternoon. Apparently her mom had a little relapse with the pills. Oh, yeah? They found her in her pajamas driving an imaginary car through the home and garden section of the local Walmart. How could they tell she was driving an imaginary car? She rolled down the window to ask for directions to the pharmacy. Ah. Not mom. Hello? Yeah, this is Charlie Harper. What? 
I see. Okay, then. Thanks for letting me know. Who was that? St. John's Hospital. Apparently, our mother checked herself in early this evening with chest pains and breathing difficulties. Oh, my God! Ever wonder who was the first guy to put pineapple on pizza? <laughs> I bet he was gay. Charlie, no straight guy is gonna say, you know what this pizza could use? A pineapple ring. <laughs> God bless him, it's good. Charlie, is mom okay? Of course she's okay, she's faking. How can you be so sure? It really doesn't make any difference. If she is faking and we rush to see her, she wins. If she's not faking and we ignore her, she gets to complain about what horrible, ungrateful sons we are, and she still wins. What if she's not faking and she dies? Well, look at you, Mr. Glass Half Full. <laughs> Hi. I just stopped by to say, I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. Oh, come on, Alan. If you can't laugh at yourself, at least let me do it. What do you want, Charlie? Well... First of all, I'd like to know exactly how you managed to let your ex-wife throw you out of my house. Because that's the first thing people are going to ask when I tell this story. She didn't throw me out. I left. Oh, good. There's a twist. You see, that's what makes a good story. Leave me alone, Charlie. Oh, lighten up. So you tried to be friends with a woman who wrecked your life, and you failed. No damage done. Just a little personal humiliation, and at this point in your life, how would you even notice that? Are you finished? Did I mention I told you so? Twice. Counting this one? Okay, I'm finished. Thank you. Now, on to new business. Currently, you and I are sitting in a house that belongs to neither one of us, while your ex-wife is sitting in the house that belongs to me. You see the paradox? I can't go back there, Charlie. She's running around with other men having a great time, and I've got nothing. You've got me. Drop dead. Okay, now you got nothing. You know, it would be different if Judith and I were both dating. True, but moot. Unless... What unless? Nah, it's stupid. Stupider than this? Come on, what do you got? Well... What if you were dating? But I'm not. But what if it looked like you were? Oh, oh, you mean... No, no, no way. I I'm not going to let you fix me up with one of your bimbo girlfriends. Okay, forget it. She'd have to be really pretty. <laughs> like, a, like a 10. And young. Like a 20. Anything else? Uh, and smart. Uh, and a sense of humor is important. Uh, Well-read, uh, good with kids, uh, non-smoking, of course. Oh, and uh, easy on the piercings. Nothing south of the equator. You're mighty picky for a guy with an adult newsstand in the sock drawer. Charlie, I can't believe that after all these years you're still single. Well... It's not that hard to believe, really. I'm a selfish, promiscuous, commitment-phobic man. Alan, on the other hand, is a very generous, loyal, one-woman kind of guy. Guilty. <laughs> Why doesn't that surprise me? Now, what is surprising is to hear a man be so honest and forthcoming about his flaws. <laughs> Charlie, you are a real breath of fresh air. Guilty. <laughs> but if you really want a breath of fresh air, take a lung full of Alan. <laughs> he is a true gentleman. Oh, Alan's always been a gentleman. I remember one time we were kids, we were in my bedroom playing Stratego, and my blouse came unbuttoned, and Alan, instead of sneaking a peek like a lot of guys would do, averted his eyes and said, Jamie, bosom. Really? Is that true, Alan? 
Pretty much. Uh, we were playing Boggle, not Stratego. <laughs> well, there you go. A gentleman, a better man than I. Oh, don't put yourself down, Charlie. You seem like a wonderful man to me. Yeah, but you heard him. I'm better. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll be right back. I think he wants to talk. You are such a good brother. You have no idea. <laughs> Bosom? Forget that. What the hell are you doing? What? I'm trying to make you look good. Turns out it's not that easy. No, you look like you're trying to make me look good, but what you're doing is making you look good. I don't know how you're doing it, but that's the net result. Alan, you're being ridiculous. Oh, am I? I think not. From the minute we walked into the restaurant, you've been sabotaging me. How? How? Look at where I'm sitting. What? You wanted to sit next to her. Yeah, and you let me. <laughs> and now you get to stare into her eyes, and I get to stare into her ear. What do you want from me? You want to change seats? Oh, sure. That won't look suspicious. I'm just trying to help, Alan. Well, how about that? I do have to pee. You want to help me? Stop talking me up. It's killing me. Okay. And stop putting yourself down. Somehow that's killing me too. Got it. Just, just sit there and eat your dinner and I'll play your game. Fine. You want to shake on it? You're disgusting. Yeah, I'm disgusting. At least I'm not the one taking a squirt on my shoe. Hi, Tina. Long time, huh? Charlie Harper. What do you want? I know things didn't end well between us. Really? I thought they ended perfectly. We spent a week in Cancun having great sex every day. Flew back to Los Angeles. You told me you call me tomorrow, and it's been... What do you know? A year and a half. That long? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess time flies when you're the scum of the earth. Okay, I had that coming. I was thoughtless and insensitive, and I know I can never really make up for it, but I want you to know that I was wrong, and I am really, truly sorry. And? No and. I just wanted to apologize for being a jerk. I want to make amends. You really mean that, don't you? I do. Absolutely. You want to come in for a cup of coffee? <laughs> sure, I guess. So, you seeing anybody? <laughs> So glad you were free tonight. I'm just glad I was home when you called. I would have called sooner, but it's been such a crazy week. Mm, it's okay, I understand. Go up, Charlie. I want you. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. How much? Can't you tell? I want to hear it. I need you. I ache for you. Okay, then. <laughs> what are you doing? I've got to get home. I got an early meeting. <laughs> Beat you to it this time, didn't I? What are you talk What kind of game are you playing here? The same game you're playing, only tonight, I win. Really? What is it that you're winning, Charlie? I'm lying here, hungry for your body, and you're walking away. So, what exactly is it that you're winning? You know. <laughs> Get out. It's too late. You can't kick me out. I already said I'm leaving. <laughs> hey. So, how'd it go? Great. I took control. I regained my self-respect. And I walked out of there with my head held high. Good for you. Good for you. So, uh, you're done beating yourself up? Not quite. <laughs> I never should have brought Jake into the relationship. It was too soon. Oh, don't be too hard on yourself. So, Craig didn't turn out to be the great guy you thought he was going to be. Oh, he was a great guy. 
My God, Alan, he took my breath away. Our first night together, he picked me up and carried me to bed in his arms. <laughs> well, the point is, you brought Jake into the relationship too soon. Greg said I was too demanding. I am, aren't I? I am a demanding, angry shrew. Hey, hey, don't say that. That, that, that is not who you are. That's just who you've become. But, but, you know, underneath it all, I, I can still see the frightened, neurotic girl with the minor eating disorder that I fell in love with. Oh, Alan. I don't get it. This is exactly like your other car. No, it's not. Listen, no banging. Well, I think you should have gotten a cool car like Greg. Hey, do yourself a favor and stop worshiping this dude. There's already a guy in your life who's worth looking up to and modeling yourself after. Dad? Okay, two guys. Well, I still don't understand why my mom had a break up with Greg. Hey, it could have been worse. She could have married him and then broken up with him. When I was your age, I was already on my third stepfather. I kind of liked the second one. Well, how do you feel? How do you think I felt? I was pissed off. Yeah, well, so am I. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be. But you can't blame your mother. She's got to do what's right for her. Do you understand? I guess. Good. And the next time you see her, I want you to give her a big hug and let her know that there's still one guy in this world who's willing to live with her. <laughs> okay. Wait, you blame your mom for everything. It's different. My mom's Satan. Come on, let's go boat shopping. Man. I don't know what he did, Charlie. The teacher just called and told me to come get him. Well, I want it on the record that if the kid was running a blackjack game under the bleachers, he didn't necessarily get the idea from me. <laughs> what? I said he didn't. Well, I can assure you he did not learn that kind of crass behavior from me. You know, maybe I should wait in the hall. Hold on. What is he doing here? Well, my car's in the shop, and Charlie was nice enough to give me a ride. No, Charlie was nice enough to call you a cab, but you wouldn't take it. So what's going on? Your son gave his teacher the bird. Okay, I want it on the record that he didn't necessarily... <laughs> Charlie, just leave it alone. What, what, what exactly happened? Well, I was writing on the board, and he thought I couldn't see him. Is this true? Yeah, I really thought she couldn't see me. <laughs> I'm afraid this kind of behavior is grounds for suspension. Maybe we can catch a matinee. <laughs> Jake, why did you flip Miss Pasternak off? Excuse me. We don't end our sentences with prepositions. We say, why did you flip off, Miss Pasternak? <laughs> I think that answers your question. Jake, why did you flip off Miss Pasternak? Because she picks on me? Jake, I don't treat you any differently than any of the other students. Yeah, right. Shut up. <laughs> you know what? I think I'd like to talk to your parents alone now. Come on, Jake. What? I don't even mean to tell my side. Buddy, you're 11. You have no side. <laughs> this isn't my fault. I was provoked. You were provoked? Yeah, it means... I know what it means. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. What you need to do now is apologize. But I'm not sorry. You don't have to be sorry. Just say it. And look it. You've got those big, cute kid eyes. Use them. That would be lying. That's your line in the sand, you mutton head. You just flipped off your teacher. Yeah, but I was being honest. And look where it got you. Oh. I think I just lost my innocence. <laughs> He's really a very well-behaved boy, but he has had some problems dealing with our separation. That's true, uh, although it wasn't so much a, a separation as a, uh, a kicking out. <laughs> 
I sympathize, but if I gave special consideration to every child whose parents were going through a divorce, I'd be getting the finger all day. We're, we're not saying that he shouldn't be punished. Oh, he certainly should. But, but just let us try to handle it. By us, he means me. I always have to be the bad guy. Well, you're better at it than me. <laughs> um, than I? You are such an ass. Uh, can we have a moment, please? I think that'd be a good idea. And it's, may we have a moment, please? Stop it. Mr. <laughs> I'm sorry, we haven't officially met. I'm Jake's uncle, Charlie. Hello. And I am really sorry. This may not be my place, and if it's not, I am really sorry. But Jake has something he wants to say. I am really sorry. <laughs> And I'm really sorry, too. Why are you sorry? Well, the kid may have gotten the rude gesture from me. I'm not used to being around children, and, well, I am really sorry. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it, but it doesn't change what Jake did. You're right. You're absolutely right. Jake, go to the vending machine and get Miss uh, Pastor Nack a peach snapple and a bag of Skittles. It is Miss Pasternak, right? Are we supposed to believe that cave women waxed their legs and wore fur bikinis? It's not a documentary, Mom. You know, I'm not going to be around forever, and the time will come when you'll regret ignoring me. <laughs> Charlie, why do you hate me? What? Whenever I come over, you do everything you can to avoid spending time with me. Obviously not everything. <laughs> Look, we're spending time together right now. All you're doing is staring at the television, and it's not even on anymore. I can still see you. Charlie, look at me. How long you want to do this for? I want you to talk to me. Okay, I'm out of here. No, no, wait. Berta, come, sit, talk. Mommy and me time over already? He hates me. No, I don't. Please, Berta, I need you. I'm done. I want to go home. Berta, I'm begging you. Oh, all right. <sighs> so why do you hate your mother? Man. Okay, I've got something I want to talk about, but it's got to stay in this room. Everything stays in the room. Yeah, sure, Judas. Does that include veiled references in one of your wise-ass songs? I said sorry about that. Too little, too late. Come on, we have to go through this every time we get together. It's water under the bridge. Thank you. Although it wouldn't have killed you to thank him in your Grammy speech. Well, it would have done, but, you know, back rack, he just went on so long. <laughs> get on with it. All right. How do I say this? Do any of you get up in the middle of the night to pee? Sure. Uh, occasionally. Sometimes I don't even get up. <laughs> this is what I can't write songs about. Oh, dress. <laughs> well, look, it's not about peeing, per se. It's about getting older. You know, I'm laying in bed with my wife. and She looks beautiful, sexy. All I want to do is finish my corn pops and go to sleep. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, shopping this, you know. Just, uh, shopping this. So you're saying the old flag's at half mast? No, the old flag is fine. I'd rather not refer to it as an old flag if you don't mind. No, my point is, it's about shifting priorities or something. Flag, drag, hag. 
I will knock your glasses through your eyes. So I will do it. Let me tell you something, fellas. Doesn't matter what the calendar says, you're as old as you feel. Me, I feel like boiled crap. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. I'm sorry, guys. It's my brother. Tell me, agreed you weren't going to be here. Don't worry, I, I just need my phone book. Uh, is that? Yes. And, and, and that, the, yeah? And, and that, he used to be. Not anymore. Um, him I don't recognize. He's our bookie. You can have your bookie, but not me? Bookies, like friends, are chosen. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Uh, um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just need my address book so I can call one of my friends. They don't care. Hurry up and get out. <laughs> Hurry up and get out. <laughs> Sounds like sex with my ex-wife. <laughs> I, I don't know if Charlie told you, but uh, I'm, I'm recently divorced, and it's it's been kind of a, a rough road. Here's your phone book. Thank you, thank you. Uh, of course, uh, I guess in, in hindsight, I should have seen it coming. I'm gonna but... count to three. Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. He's a little bent on a shape because I told him he couldn't be part of the group. What up? Well, you just saw him, didn't you? <laughs> Trust me, he doesn't get any better. I mean, he actually thinks this is a support group. This is a support group, Joe. You're the only one who's pretending it's about scotch and cigars. Okay, well, whatever kind of group it is, we still have rules about new guys joining. Well, but he's your brother. I mean, he's obviously going through a rough time. Seems like you should be a little bit more supportive of him, pal. Hey, I support him plenty. I share my home with him. I share my food with him. Hell, I moved my foosball table so we could park in my garage. What more do you people want from me? Well, let me tell you something about sharing, kid. Sharing is a two-way street. When you share with another human being, you always get back more than you gave. Assuming that you're smart enough to share with somebody that's got more stuff than you had in the beginning. College students are really stupid. Yeah. If you shouldn't run with scissors, you definitely shouldn't run with hedge clippers. I can't believe I missed out on a sure thing because I was sitting on the can listening to you not take a crap. You're actually blaming me because I had to go to the bathroom. You didn't have to go to the bathroom. You were just trying to stick me with the check. Oh, oh, I see. So you know my bowels better than I do. I will when I pull them out through your nostrils. Well, I don't have to listen to this. What's your hurry? You see a check coming? What do you think? Should we watch the rest of the movie? Might as well. I'm not gonna sleep tonight anyway. Leave me alone, Charlie. No, 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 no. Let's get this out in the open. There's nothing to get out in the open. I had to go to the bathroom, and even though I don't have as much money as you, I was fully prepared to split the check. Not quite 50-50, because, you know, you had the better wine and your date had two appetizers, but my fair share! <laughs> what are you doing? What do you think? Alan, you can sit, but you can't hide. <laughs> I'm going to shower and get ready for bed. You're kidding. You're just going to walk away from me? Well, Charlie, when you're being irrational, you leave me no choice. I'm not being irrational. You want to see irrational? Here's irrational. Yeah! I don't freaking believe it. Bird is 
always complaining about. This is kind of fun. Yeah, well, you're dealing with pretty girl underwear. Berta's got to handle Jake's skivvies after P.E. and pudding pops. Good point. What are you doing? Pouring a glass of vodka. Is that part of doing the laundry? Because I can really get into this. No, I'm just mad at myself. Well, in that case, pour me one. I'm mad at you, too. So what's the problem? I went over to Candy's again. And had that go. Not only are we not selling the condo, I may have promised to buy her a new fridge. Oh, come on. She likes getting ice without having to open the door. You poor whipped sap. Oh, me? What about you? What about me? Charlie, you're doing a woman's laundry. No, 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 no. See, that's just me trying to pitch in. Oh, just face it. Lydia's got you wrapped around her little finger. She does not. She uses this one. <laughs> and it's not so much wrapped as skewered. Who's using my washing machine? Excuse me, but it's my washing machine, and I'm using it to wash Lydia's clothes. You're doing laundry? Hey, it's not rocket science. Cold wash, cold rinse, gentle cycle. But first, you separate the delicates. Is that so? Yeah, that's so. <laughs> that's probably them now. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, Mom. I thought you were my washing machine. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Merry Christmas. Come on in. <laughs> Hey, Merry Christmas, Charlie. Yeah, swell. I'll go get the kid. Ooh, eggnog. Honey, we've got a long drive ahead of us. We're spending the holidays in San Diego with my parents. That's why I need eggnog. Hey, I spent Thanksgiving with your parents. Oh, oh really? Your, uh, your mom's out of rehab? Yes, my mom's out of rehab. Actually, she kind of jumped the fence. Well, a woman's going to be your mother-in-law. You might as well get used to it. Remember the time she rode out of Betty Ford on a lawnmower? On the plus side, she bakes Toll House cookies with walnuts and Demerol. Sleep never goes back in the box the way it came out. That's a life lesson, Jake. <laughs> Come on, your mom's here. I move. Okay. Table set on the deck and dinner's in the oven. Great. You might want to keep the candles away from the eggnog. Got it. <laughs> All right, then. I'm leaving now. Goodbye and thanks. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All the best. Same to you. <laughs> Give me my bonus, you blockhead. Oh, right. Thank you for all your hard work. <laughs> I couldn't get along without you. You're one in a million. <laughs> really? What would Jesus do? <laughs> Herb? Oh, no thanks, I'm driving. Awesome. No, you won't, it's for grown-ups. I'll have another. Sweetie, my parents are waiting. I know, dear. <laughs> Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Okay, Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a goodbye. Hang on, I got a long bus ride and I don't want to sober up halfway home. Here you go, one hot chocolate for the lactating mommy. Thank you. I see little Brittany Pam is having the grande bubicino. Yeah, and she's biting the straw. <laughs> Listen, you got any plans for Saturday night? I don't think so, why? Well, my mom wants to have a big family dinner over at her place. Family? Uh, who's family? You know, me, you, Jake, Charlie, my mom, your mom. Oh, oh, well, uh, that sounds like fun. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I'm busy this Saturday. But you just said... I misspoke. <laughs> oh, I get it. I'm not good enough to meet your mother. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I'm concerned about the, the baby. Why? Oh, boy, uh... I was hoping I wouldn't have to tell you this, but my mother feeds on the souls of the young. Okay, 
just forget it. Oh, well, come on, honey, homie. I mean, uh, don't you think a, a family dinner is pushing things a little too fast? Too yeah. fast? You weren't worried about things going too fast on our first date when you chewed through my nursing bra. Uh, uh, in my defense, I didn't know about the flaps. No, I thought that you were different. I, I am different. Ask anybody. They'll tell you. Alan's different. No, 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 you're not. You're just like all the rest. Flirtsy, squirtsy, and then a Riva Dirtsy. <laughs> No, I, I didn't well, I'm not to... that kind of girl anymore. I am a mama now, and I demand to be treated with respect. Sweetie, sweetie, calm down. I, I, I do respect you. I, I just thought that, that the dinner was a little premature. Premature? You weren't worried about being premature on our first date when you ruined a perfectly good sweater. You know what? You know what? Saturday's fine. The dinner sounds great. We'll, we'll be there. Yeah, damn right you'll be there. What? You never seen a screaming woman with a bare boob? <laughs> your car. What? What are you doing up? You were out with Taylor's mom, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Are you sure? I think I know who I was out with. Okay. Well, maybe you can explain this picture of your perfectly waxed car in Taylor's driveway. Where the hell did you get that? Taylor took it with her phone and emailed it to me. Oh, okay. Not my car. <laughs> What about this one of you kissing Taylor's mom in front of the car? Uh, Photoshop? How was your date? Very nice. Bite me. Okay, well, good night. You said you wouldn't go out with her and you did. I had to, Jake. She called me. What difference does that make? I have to explain it to you? I have to explain everything to you. Okay, okay. Let's say you're a hunter. If a deer takes your gun, shoots itself, then straps itself to the roof of your car, you have to take it home and eat it. What? I'm sorry. I can't make it any clearer. If you keep seeing her, Uncle Charlie, you're going to be sorry. Whoa. Is that a threat? No, it's a promise. What's the difference? I don't know. One's a threat and one's a promise. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. Let's be reasonable here. Your relationship with your little friend is what? Instant messaging and holding hands at the pep rally? What's a pep rally? <laughs> Just listen to me. Before you know it, you'll have forgotten all about Taylor. And you'll have forgotten all about her mother. No doubt. But I guarantee you I'll be forgetting a lot more than holding her hand at a pep rally. Last chance, Uncle Charlie. Ooh, I'm so scared. Last chance, Uncle Charlie. Please. Jake! What's going on? Nothing. Gotta go. I'm dead. You are so dead! recipe. Where are you, you rat bastard? Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, get down on the sand with your arms spread. It's okay. I'm just trying to kill again. Release the dogs. That's right. Release the dogs. <laughs> What's this stuff called again? Vitamin E oil. Mm. Feels really good. <laughs> hey, Mom, I'm ready to go. 
Where's your father? He's in the den rubbing oil on Naomi. <laughs> Who's Naomi? Or his daughter. Your father's rubbing oil on a woman in front of you? Nah, I couldn't watch. It was too creepy. <laughs> well, we'll just see about that. Oh, by the way, I found out why I get bad grades. It's all your fault. <laughs> why is it my fault? You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alan. <laughs> Wait in the car. Alan, what do you think you're doing? Oh, hi, Judith. Naomi here was worried about stretch marks, and I was showing her how vitamin E can help prevent them, you know, like I did with you, and then you walked in, and that's pretty much it. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, why don't you pull up your top and let her check out your belly? I will not. So he rubbed this on you, too? Oh, he rubbed all right, but it was only to satisfy his own twisted needs. Excuse me, but you were the one who was constantly horny. And you sure took advantage of it, didn't you? Hey, when the bar is only open nine months a decade, you drink till you puke. <laughs> and then you keep drinking. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, buddy. You're turning into quite the little ninja, aren't you? There's just one thing I don't understand. Oh, well, what's that, honey? If you have sex with a pregnant lady, wouldn't she have twins? No. Otherwise, I'd be having a whole damn litter. Good to have you back, Mr. Harper. Thank you, Bobby. We haven't seen your mother here for quite some time. Well, maybe you just didn't recognize her. Like Satan, my mother can take many forms. <laughs> Good one. I'm ready to order. Of course. Apologies for the frivolity. What would you like? I'll have the seared ahi tuna filet. Hmm, a good choice. I want it very rare. That's how we serve I it. I want it red in the middle, not pink. Shall do. If it's pink, don't even bother bringing it. Got it. Just give it to someone who doesn't know what rare is. Of course. You know what? Forget it. You won't get it right. <laughs> is your salmon fresh? Flown in today. What time? I'll ask the chef. Many forms. Thought you were joking. <laughs> You eat here regularly? Not anymore. So, listen, uh, about this weekend, my ex is going to be out of town, so I'll have the kids. Whoa, 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 Lydia. No one loves the little ones more than old Uncle Charlie. <laughs> but don't you think it might be a bit soon for me to meet your kids? Oh, I don't want you to meet them. Why not? Because I'm very careful about who I expose them to. What's that supposed to mean? Charlie, please. Why can't I expose myself to your kids? <laughs> I mean, why can't I meet your kids? Please don't make me hurt your feelings. You can't hurt my feelings. All right, fine. You're a professional boy toy, a perpetual adolescent leading a dissolute life. You may have your uses, but you're not the kind of man I want around my children. Oh. What made you think that would hurt my feelings? <laughs> Two o'clock, Jet Blue from Vancouver. Would you like me to find out what the movie was? Don't bother. I'll just have the cat living. And I'll have the pork chop with a baked potato. How about a little angioplasty for dessert? Yeah, I like a nice pork chop once in a while. Fine, I'm not going to tell you how to eat. Really? Even if I chew slowly for your pleasure? <laughs> <clears throat> so, yay or nay on the pork chop? <laughs> I'll have the spinach and goat cheese salad. Good choice. Thank you. On the food? <laughs> Those. Skull earrings? Yeah, they're silver and they got ruby eyes. Okay, first of all, for eleven ninety-five, those aren't rubies. You don't know that. Oh, but I do. <laughs> and second, girls like Wendy Cho don't wear skull earrings. How do you know? She gets straight A's, right? She plays violin. She's also the captain of the math team. Exactly. So you see my point. Oh, okay. How about that skull belt buckle? No skulls. Just out of curiosity, does this Wendy Cho hate her parents? I don't think so. Why? Just trying to get a handle on the relationship. She says she likes me because I'm unpretentious. Do you know what that means? It means she likes me. Yeah, okay. So what do you want this gift to say? Uh, happy birthday? A birthday card says happy birthday. What are you trying to tell her by giving her jewelry? I don't know. I guess that I love her. 
What? Nothing. That's, that's terrific. Hey, just because you don't love any girl doesn't mean I shouldn't. Excuse me, but I have loved many girls, and many girls have loved me. That's not love. It's just sex. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. If you died tomorrow, how many of those girls would come to your funeral? A lot of them. Granted, a few might show up just to make sure I'm really dead. <laughs> but I feel confident that the overall tone of the event would be one of sadness. If you say so. Yeah, I say so. Let's get out of here. I haven't picked out a gift yet. Then get her the stupid skull earrings. But you said she wouldn't like them. Who do I know? Nobody loves me. Nobody's coming to my funeral. Whoa, where'd that come from? Here, what about this gold heart necklace? It's kind of expensive. If you want the best, Jake, you gotta pay for it. Yeah, but $39? I mean, I love her and everything. <laughs> Tell you what, if it means we can get out of here quicker, I'll front you the difference. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I'm offering you a great deal. Yeah, but you always say if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. All right. How about if I pay for the whole thing? That sounds even better, so no. Come on, Brainiac. What do I have to do for you? Just promise to be sad at my funeral. Do I have to cry? No. Or there be food? <laughs> Yes. Can I bring a date? You're just screwing with me now, right? How does it feel? What is that? Steven Tyler rented the house next door. The, the guy from Aerosmith? I lost my virginity to him. You know, his music. Thanks, I was confused. Apparently I'm getting ready for a tour. So what's... In the box. I went out and picked you up a little something I thought might put a smile on your face. Alan, the only thing in this box that could possibly put a smile on my face is your severed head. <laughs> this is <a> good one. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> Come on, open it. A hat? It's a very expensive hat. Since when do I wear hats? Well, you don't, but uh, I saw it and it seemed so... you, you know, cool, rakish, yet... Forgiving? Okay, fine. I forgive you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Aren't you going to try it on? No. If you really forgave me, you'd try it on. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is you. Let's, uh, let's try tilting it a little bit here. Oh, baby. <laughs> you got to see this. Come on inside. We'll take a look. Charlie, you coming? What's going on? You should leave, Alan. Why? Just trust me. All right. Take a pause for the cause. Ah, uh, sorry, man. Thank you and good night! <laughs>
Why do you want me to take care of her? Charlie! I'm coming! Come on, talk to me. Give me a sign. Marry that cute girl down the beach. <laughs> Rose. Yes, that's her name. You know what? You can tell me in person, because I am this close to sticking my tongue in a light socket. Why don't you stick your tongue in my mouth instead? I mean, Rose's mouth. <laughs> Shut the door and sit down. Tell her to keep her mouth shut. Is this some old gangster movie? I think she's gonna sing like a bird. Any good? Not really. Just gives me a warm feeling to know that all those young, beautiful actors are now dead. <laughs> Dame knows too much. You want I should take care of her, boss? <laughs> Take care of her, but make it look like an accident. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. I'll take care of her. Sorry, I misunderstood. <laughs> no. Yeah? Uncle Charlie's gonna take me back to Mom's now. Well, come in here and say goodbye. Bye. That's it? Come here and give your old dad a hug. <laughs> That's better. You still depressed? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Just taking a little nap. You've been napping for two days. I'm getting old, Jake. Old people nap a lot. It's kind of a dry run for death. Okay. Well, see ya. See ya. Hey, Dad? Yeah? Even though Mom stopped loving you and Candy stopped loving you, you don't have to worry about me. Thanks, pal. You're my dad. I pretty much gotta love you. <laughs> So, is he still curled up like a cocktail shrimp? Yep. This was a real fun weekend. Wait in the car, Jake, and I'll be right there. Okay, I am running out of patience with this guy. I've had relationships end, and I don't go crawling into bed over it. <clears throat> yeah, 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 you know what I mean. It may not be just the relationship. What are you talking about? Charlie, I've studied psychology for eight years and been a patient for 20. <laughs> Your brother is exhibiting all the classic signs of clinical depression. What are you saying? You think he might try to hurt himself? The important question is, do we stop him? <laughs> oh, like I'm the only one here thinking that. <laughs> all right. I didn't want to have to do this, but desperate times call for desperate measures. What are you going to do? Something I hoped I'd never have to. You don't mean... I'm afraid so. Hello? Mom? <laughs> the thumb with an engagement ring is that the price should equal three months' salary. Ouch. I wonder what broad came up with that. <laughs> it wasn't a broad. It was a marketing scheme dreamed up by the International Diamond Cartel. Probably a bunch of chicks. <laughs> but at least diamonds are forever, right? Oh, yeah, forever. My ex-wife still has hers. And while I'm wearing mismatched socks from the irregular bin. Well, Mia and I are gonna go the distance. Fifteen, maybe twenty years. That, that's not the distance. The distance is death. Hey, if I'm still married after twenty years, kill me. I, I can't believe you're doing this at all. Why not? Why shouldn't someone like me settle down with a wife and kids? Boy, I don't know where to start. <laughs> It's the old Charlie you're thinking of. Oh, okay. And to whom am I speaking now? May I help you, gentlemen? Yeah, we're looking for an engagement ring. How nice. <laughs> Do you have anything in mind? Ah. Uh, uh, nothing ostentatious. Uh, something in a brilliant cut, per perhaps with the uh, complimentary baguettes. Size isn't as important as uh, color and clarity. 
Well, someone knows what he wants. What can I say? He's my life. so she can have a baby. You're kidding. Apparently, that's another one of its uses. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm not sure. Near as I can tell, she's chasing a rabbit. <laughs> so, so why did Mia come to you? Well, it turns out her biological clock is ticking. Most of the guys she meets are ballet dancers, so, you know, slim pickings there. <laughs> and she doesn't want to wait for Mr. Wright to come along which pretty much leaves you. Yep. I'm good genetic material, you know, easy on the eyes. And she wants to raise the kid alone, which fits nicely into my lifestyle. Charlie, drinking, gambling, and casual sex is not a lifestyle. Okay, okay, I didn't come in here to argue with you. Look in the hedges, look in the hedges. What? I don't know. So, so what are you, what are you gonna do? You gonna go to a sperm bank? Well, I tried to talk her into a direct deposit. <laughs> you know, straight from the tap. But she really dug in her heels. Not in the good way. And, and you're okay with it? Well, why not? I've sent billions of soldiers out there. It's time for one of them to finally take the hill. <laughs> now what? I think she caught the rabbit. <laughs> Anyway, I'm thinking this could be my one chance to guarantee that the Charlie Jean lives on. You know, make sure that the double helix that is uniquely me keeps on trucking into the future. Okay, let's assume that's a good thing. <laughs> one more question. Yeah? If you have no doubts about this, why'd you wake me up to tell me? Well, you're my brother, and I thought you should know you're gonna be an uncle. You mean I'm gonna be an uncle to a child I'll never see? Tell you what. When he turns 12, I'll track him down, bring him to live with you, and we'll see if you get your phone messages. Come on, Jake. We're going to be late for the party. I'm ready. It's very nice. Yeah, I think we're good. Turn around. You're supposed to take the price tag off. But you said it was good to be seen in expensive clothes. You still want him to learn from his mistakes? Fine, can we go now? Hang on. Let's see the dance moves. Bum, ch, dum, bum, ba, na, dum, ch, dum, bum, ba, na, dum, ch, dum. Don't stare at your shoes. Eyes on the girl at all times. Pretend you care. <laughs> ch, dum, bum, ba, na, dum. Good, good, good. Now, how do you stand when you know Wendy's looking at you? That's it. Little head bob. Show me the sleepy eyes. I said sleepy, not brain dead. All right. Who's the man? I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. Okay, let's go get him. Twenty one thirty eight. Twenty one thirty six. Try the house with the balloons tied to the mailbox. Oh, right. Okay. Let's go. Where are you going? I want to meet her parents. Say hello. Find out when to pick you up. Alan, you take one step out of this car, and we'll beat your brains out with a tire iron. Thank you, Uncle Charlie. Have fun. Uh, call my cell when you want me to pick you up. There he goes. Maya's son is attending his first boy-girl party. <sighs> Who's that opening the door? Oh, oh, that's uh, that's Wendy Cho. Oh, good. She's cute. Kid's got taste. But she's like a foot taller than her. That's all right. 
When they slow dance, his head will be perfectly positioned. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. Right, like you never copped a feel with your ear? No! Okay, once with Aunt Sophie. Well, that was an accident. So you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Pretty exciting, huh? Opening night. Well, having seen the previews, I'm betting closing night, too. Boy, this brings back memories. Mm. Sixth grade was the happiest two years of my life. Mm. It's the finger. Excuse me. So, Candy, what's your favorite musical? The trombone. I can't believe you brought her here. I had to. Jake invited her. Is that a diamond necklace? You never gave me a diamond necklace. Yeah, well, you never gave me extra special bonus sex. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Who's this? This? Oh, this is Candy. Hi, I'm with Alan. Oh, are you one of those young people he takes care of? Yep, yep, yep. Good old St. Alan. Just can't do enough for the kids. Look at this diamond necklace he gave me. He gave you a diamond necklace? Don't get the wrong idea. It wasn't to get me to have sex. Oh. I was already doing everything you wanted. I am as shocked as you are. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable foe To bear with unbearable sorrow No matter how far And the world will be better for this That one man couldn't be covered with stars What was that Still about? Funny story. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Uh, don't bother your mom. Is uh, is Candy around? Yeah, she lives here now. Yeah, I know. Does this mean she and mom are gay? No, it does not. Too bad. Why? It'd be a lot easier to explain. Um, could you just tell Candy I'm here? Okay. Candy, my dad's here! What do you want, Alan? I want to talk to Candy. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Because she's a sweet, innocent girl, and I don't want you to ruin her life, too. Too? How did I ruin your life? You stole my youth. You took my house. <laughs> that seems like a fair trade. Face it, Alan, this whole escapade with Candy is just a pathetic attempt to find a younger version of me. Are you kidding? Judith, I had a younger version of you, and let me tell you, it was no great shakes. <laughs> Okay, Judith, I'll, I'll talk to him. Oh, sweetie, he doesn't really want to talk to you. There's only one thing a man like this is interested in. What? <laughs> Forget it. I'm here if you need me. <clears throat> Hello, Alan. Listen, uh, Candy, I, I am really sorry about our fight. I, I know I can be a bit of a control freak, and but I, I honestly care for you, and I hope you'll give me another chance. I see. Excuse me. I can't let you steal my youth. You're not fooling anybody, Judith. Come on, Candy. Tell me what you think. Okay. I think we've reached an implant in our relationship. Impasse. I think we've reached an impasse in our relationship. Goodbye. Uh, excuse me, is this Judith Harper's house? Yeah, she traded it for her youth. Hi, Daddy! Hi, sweetheart! 
Yes. Come on in, Judith. Can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to meet her. I know you two are going to love each other. I watch one donkey sex show and you make me pay for it the rest of my life. You're up early. Well, it's a beautiful day. Shame to waste it sleeping. Must have got to bed early then. I guess. Well, you know what they say. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and can't get laid, huh? Maybe I'm not trying. Yeah. And look for me next month on the cover of Maxim. I'll have nothing on but the vacuum. Hey, you're up early. Yes, Alan, I'm up early. I went to bed early and I slept alone. Anything else you want to know? Was I this cranky when I wasn't having sex? Nah, you were more of a sullen whiner. Okay, Huggy Bear, I gotta go. Oh, all right, Candy, have a good day. Yo, Daisy May. Just out of curiosity, when you leave here, where is it you go? To the gym. I have to take care of my body, because it's my instrument. Mine too. Three beers and a bratwurst, and my ass turns into a French horn. Really? Whenever I have beer and bratwurst, I just fart a lot. Okay. Okay, Kenny. Well, I'll see you tonight. Bye, everybody. Congratulations, Alan. It looks like you've officially boinked her brains out. Okay, so she's not overly sophisticated. Sophisticated? She's two marbles rolling around in a tin can. Hey, hey. She's got a great heart. She's, she's warm and loving, and, and she genuinely cares for me. I stand corrected. One marble. <laughs> Look, buddy, I'm happy you finally found an instrument to play that isn't in your own pants. But she's been spending a lot of time here, and if you're not careful, pretty soon she's going to want to move in. Would that be so bad? Hey, I don't have a lot of rules around here, but nine of the top ten are just different ways of saying women are not allowed to live here. They come and they go. Often they do one of those things multiple times, but in the end, they always go. But why is that so important? Alan, there's a natural balance in this house which must not be upset. It's like the Amazon rainforest. You bring in one too many spider monkeys, and before you know it, you're up to your ass and tree frogs. Oh, oh tree frogs. That, that clears everything up. D don't, don't patronize me, you hump-happy simpleton. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I do. You're, you're saying that if Candy were to move in here, it would be an environmental disaster of epic proportions. Exactly. So I guess now would be a bad time to tell you that she's been living here the past three weeks. <laughs> what? Who's the simpleton now? Candy got evicted from her apartment three weeks ago, and she moved in here. Oh, please. If a woman was living in my own house for that long, I think I'd notice. Oh, really? Really? Well, uh, let's, uh, let's try a little experiment. What color is the couch in the living room? The couch? <laughs> no peeking. What color is it? Well, it's a, kind of a beige-ish. <laughs> Tan. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Go look. Fine. What the hell is that? Your couch. Jake spilled grape juice on it last summer and I had it reupholstered. Last summer? Yeah, it was gone almost a month. Berta and I had a bet on how long it would take you to notice. I had 50 bucks on never. All right, all right, this is unacceptable. This is my house. And if furniture is gonna get reupholstered or moved or changed in any way whatsoever, I demand to be consulted. Okay, from now on, I promise. Thank you. I bought the damn thing. I could have a vote. Maybe show me a swatch. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Did somebody say Candy's living here? Man. I'm really getting tired of pizza. Well, I'm off to work. <laughs> used to it. Enjoy your pizza! Excuse me, senor. Alan, Alan, what are you doing? 
Oh, Judith, I swear to God, I, I will get you your alimony as soon as possible. No, please don't worry about it. Really? Charlie told me what's going on. I don't need the money right now. Really? I may not have mentioned it, but when my grandmother passed away, she left me a pretty substantial inheritance. Really? In fact, I want you to have this. Really? Pay me when you can. The important thing is you get back on your feet. I'm a so happy. Hi, Huggy Bear. Boy, I love the new car you got me. Hi, Mrs. Harper. Doesn't he look cute in a mustache? I'm a so sad. <laughs>